In a lot of ways, our epidemic election was a resounding success. A record number of Americans participated, including 65 million of whom voted from home without even having to put on shoes. And despite months of concerns about postal service slowdowns, or maybe because of all those concerns, almost every ballot mailed made it to elections offices in time to be counted. But after a series of NBCLX reports detailing just how slow the mail was in some states, we didn't want to just let this go. We wanted to dig into how many ballots didn't count because of USPS missteps. This is a Postal Service test update. This summer saw a tug of war between a sky is falling mentality. You're deliberately dismantling this once proud tradition. And denialism that the Postal Service somehow wasn't disappointing millions of Americans with dramatically slower mail times. Today, Mr. DeJoy will be viciously attacked with prepackaged questions and false accusations. But according to a federal judge, the president's handpicked postmaster general wasn't forthcoming with America about how his cost-cutting measures were slowing down your mail. So the threat was real. And that's when a group of watchdogs went to work. All of us, I think, did stop a true disaster. This could have been so much worse. My name is Remy Green. I am a civil rights and voting rights lawyer based in Brooklyn and Queens, New York. Remy was one of the attorneys who successfully sued the president and postmaster Louis DeJoy, forcing the USPS to roll back dozens of changes and start disclosing internal performance reports they didn't want to share. We absolutely stopped, I think, some of the most dramatic damage to the postal system that, that was intended. On the other hand, we did not make it back to the place that the Postal Service was in terms of service standards before DeJoy took the helm. I combed through hundreds of pages of performance reports, which revealed more than 10% of first-class letters were not getting delivered in a timely fashion before the election, with key markets like Philadelphia, D.C., and Detroit faring far worse. Under pressure, the USPS stepped up to prioritize ballots in those final few days, running hundreds of late trips to elections offices across the country. They declined our interview requests for this story, but pointed out that they also mailed postcards to customers ahead of time, warning that the agency wasn't performing well enough for you to wait until the last minute to mail that ballot. Adding to the frustration, 50 different states keep their election records in 50 different ways. So it's actually impossible right now to know exactly how many ballots were rejected because they came in too late or how many of those were the fault of the USPS. However, some back of the envelope math based on an NBCLX analysis of election records tells us of the 65 million mail ballots cast this fall, only one to 2% of those were mailed in the final few days before the election. Postal records suggest somewhere around 8% of those votes were delivered slower than expected. So that's somewhere in the 50 to 100,000 range nationwide. And since more than half the states, including most of the key battlegrounds, give no grace period for ballots arriving after election day, we're talking 25 to 50,000 ballots thrown out because of USPS delays, with performance particularly bad in these five swing states. But even with one to 2,000 voters disenfranchised in each of those battlegrounds, we just didn't see any of the super slim margins that could have been changed with better postal performance. Bullet dodged. If this had been closer, if this election had been like the 2000 election in any way, we would be seeing much more success in the attempt to essentially undermine the, the results of the election. Postal workers delivered 99.9% .9 of your mail ballots in time to be counted. Not bad. I'm not about to give you know, a um, participation program um, trophy to the USPS this time, but you know, I will give credit to voters who got the message and heeded the warnings. I'm Charles Stewart, professor of political science at MIT. And co-director of the Stanford MIT Healthy Elections Project. He says not only did the fear of the Postal Service swinging the election not materialize, but that fear sparked a revolution of early ballot submissions. Data from swing states like Florida and North Carolina show the typical absentee mail ballot rush came earlier than normal. And elections officials all over the country tell us that means one of the biggest reasons for ballot rejections historically, late arrivals, will be a much smaller factor this year. South Carolina, for instance, received 44% fewer late ballots this fall than they did for their June primary, despite four times as many votes cast in the fall. Even more good news, the top reason for ballot rejections, signature issues, was also helped by all that vote by mail attention. Because not only did voters pay more attention to the instructions, but when they didn't and still mailed their ballot in early, 
many elections officials still had a chance to reach out and get the voters to fix their mistakes before election day, leading to what appears to be a record high rate of ballot acceptance. And that's a great thing for democracy. With any luck moving forward, it might even help America turn around our historically bad numbers on election turnout. Voters have taken a bite of the apple and uh, many of them are going to continue voting by mail. It was really heartening to see not only the experiment going well, but everything it took to make it happen. Hey everyone, Noah Pransky here. Thanks for checking out the NBCLX YouTube channel. For more videos, click here. And don't forget to click subscribe to join the NBCLX community.